Hey everybody, this is Sherry with Learn Not Hollow Crafts, hashtag old lady with tools, <clears throat> coming to you for our Monday Night Live. I missed last Monday because I came back from Carmen's, had a just a, a tremendous time, guys. Uh, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, and so um, I was traveling that day because I didn't come back till Monday. So now I'm trying to get back into the groove of things. So if you're here, pop on. I am going to bring this up on my my business page on my um, phone here because I don't always see comments here for whatever reason. And so hopefully I will see them here. So there we are. So anyway, today, tonight, I'm going to take this um, old wooden box. I'll turn you down so you can. Well, hello, Lauren. How you doing, sweetie? So, I'm going to take this, just this ordinary wooden box. It wasn't nothing fancy. I've had it for um, a couple, several years, I should say. There was some, um, hey, my beautiful daughter. There was some uh, soap advertising on it. Hey, Sheila, thank you. I did catch it, Sheila. Um, I just had it for a couple days. Mine was really mild compared to everybody else. So, if I sound a little more raspier than usual, um, that's why, but I am uh, much better than a lot. And I'm on the men, so I'm good. But anyway, this box had a um, some soap advertising, but it wasn't uh, an old box. It was a repo, so I didn't mind painting it. But I couldn't find no use for it. So um, we're going to use it up tonight with some decoupage paper. And um, I did, um, thank you, Sheila. I did uh, prime it first and then paint it white. And so we're going to use it up with uh, some decoupage paper and some more decoupage paper. So uh, let's get started. This is the Neutral Ticking by Royce, of course. And we're just going to get this decoupage on there. Let me get my medium. I have to stand up to do this, guys, because I'm short. And I did find out why my picture to the, that small picture, and when I'm in the full screen why I've gotten darker is because evidently the camera on my laptop is going out it's getting old so we're just gonna have to put up with it because I'm not ready to buy a new one well hi Debbie how are you I'm so happy you caught me live so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I got this paper where I want it I did cut the papers to size to fit the um the sides of this box so the first thing I'm going to do is I just want to lay down a little anchor row here, guys, to hold it in place before I missed my paper. I have better luck doing it that way. It doesn't really matter how you do it. This is just the way I do it. So and now I will miss my paper. And I don't know if anybody's tried this misting part, but I'm just going to tell you. It's probably one of the best tips um, that I've learned from Royce is misting that paper. I literally can get a pretty much wrinkle-free surface by misting that paper. And, and it's not that the wrinkles bother me a whole lot, but it just, I don't know. It just makes the paper smoother. I really like mist in the paper. It's kind of become my uh, my go-to. So, and I'm gonna go down the middle and then work from my the middle out, just like this. And I'm, I've had this come around the corner like this because of what I'm going to do with the next piece. I'm just going to kind of fold this back. And my second piece, I'm literally going to butt it up next to that. And these gray lines will line up. So you won't even be able to see what I did. And I'm having it come across around the corner this way instead of butting my top paper up because I think there's less chance of me to 
uh, for it to get ripped off. Well, hey, Jenny, how are you? We missed you in Colorado. Jenny, I got to find out your store hours. Because I'm going to be coming to Illinois to see my daughter. And I really would love to meet up with you and see your store. So, I literally, I've got to find out your store hours. But see how this these match up now? And then this will blend in where I did the organic tear on the paper. And so, you won't even be able to see unless you look at it real hard that um, what I did. So we're just going to decoupage all sides of these bo this box first. And I got to be honest with you guys. I really was tempted to use the corrugated metal because that is my go-to paper. <laughs> but I thought I better pick a different paper because <laughs> this paper is cool too. I just love the corrugated metal though. We did, Jenny. I'm just getting over it. I did not have it as bad as like I was telling um, Sheila. I did not have it as bad as uh, some, but I am getting over it too. That's why, I mean, I have a raspy voice anyway, but I feel like I'm like extra raspy. So, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling much better. So I'm good. And there's a little hole here, guys, because we're going to put a light in this box. So I drilled a hole in here to feed my wire through, which will all make sense when we get to that point. So now this side, I have another long piece of paper. But I think this side, I did a little different. That would be perfect, Jenny. Yes. I was in uh, Geneseo yesterday because my grandson had a ball game. And I didn't get a hold of you ahead of time because I was feeling under the weather and wasn't sure if I was even going to make it. And then when I decided to go, it was like way too last minute. So that's why I didn't bother you. But we're going to meet up here. And so this one, I just did an organic tear on this white edge because if I lay it... And I don't think it matters which side, honestly, like this. Then I'm still keeping with my pattern. And um, it won't be noticeable either. So I really did think about how I was going to make this paper flow. And, and yet keeping my lines straight. Um, when I have lined paper, I have to. Thank you, Jenny. I have to be mindful, you guys. I can't write on unlined paper, so I'm always a little nervous when I'm doing a paper that if it's not straight, it'll be very noticeable. So hopefully when I get down done with this, it will be good. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Oh, I forgot to miss my paper, didn't I? Well, hopefully. Maybe I'll miss it here real quick. I don't know that it will matter, but... I don't like when I forget that step because it it really does. Okay, I got a I got a big wrinkle right down the center of this paper that I do not like. So let's. And my decoupage medium I'm using is uh, DIY liquid patina, and I like it because. Well, for one thing, I sell the DIY paint, which is one reason why I use it. But I also like it because how I can just manipulate that paper like that without too much um, trouble. And so now here's the last one, and I really got to decide how. I think I made it so one edge like this would match up on the stripes again. Well, hey, Marsha. Thank you, Lauren. Hey, Sonny. Good to see you. I'm going to juice up a wooden box, Sonny, put a, put a light in it with a... Um, fall fall floral we're going to decorate for fall some more oh hi maria from ocean county new jersey very cool billy yes billy this paper is so versatile i mean 
you can't help but love it. Okay, so let's do let's get this end down because it's exactly where I wanted it. Yes, the wise owl varnish is very good too. Absolutely. I used to be a wise owl retailer, Jenny, and that's what I used all the time when I carried it. So you're absolutely correct. Okay, then we're just going to bring this around the corner like this. My stripes are matching up close enough. You won't even be able to see because I did an organic tear there. Let's miss the paper. Fold her back. Oh, Oop. I didn't wreck my paper. No, I didn't even think of that. Oh, no, we're okay. Okay, let's see. Let me put a wooden block there. There. Okay, so now I've got to figure out where I want to organically tear or do this. Um, those will be fine finish off this side and I actually think I'm going to organically tear this and come around I gotta handle this paper gently because it's wet let's see here okay I gotta turn this to me I gotta see this guys um okay I'm going to try and organically tear it like right here and see what happens here. And this is just a water pen. And I really like these for tearing the paper. A paintbrush and water does the same thing. This just seems to be a little quicker for me. Either one works. Okay. Let's come around here. One minute here. I want to tear a little, I want to tear a little bit off of here. I don't want that much paper underneath the other. So I'm just fixing this edge a little bit. Just tearing a little bit of the paper away. Okay. Now we'll finish decoupaging this down. Like so. Let's fold this over like this. Get this stuck down good. Come here. I'm going to spritz my paper a little more. I don't want it to dry out on me. And the little wrinkles I'm not worried about. It's only because... Of the paper itself they will dry out so i don't ever get too excited okay so now i want to make sure where this line is going to hit and i do not want to cover up that gray stripe because that will make it very very noticeable i'm trying to make it look like the pattern was seamless We'll see how well I do. Okay. I think. I think I can probably live with that. Make sure the edges just stuck down good. Take a little bit off of there. 
There we go. And once that dries and I seal the whole piece, you will never be able to tell that I've come around the corners or anything. I think it'll be fine. Now I'm going to set this like this. I want to give this a good drying because I want to clean up my edges before we go any further. I want to get all that excess paper off of there. So, yeah. I have found my edges clean up better if my paper is dry. Or pretty much dry. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we can do. We need my scissors. Okay. Where do I want to start? Is the question. Again, sanding block. I go in one direction. To clean this paper up. I can see right here it's really wet. So I want to get this a little drier because if I try sand that off, I'm going to tear the paper. And I know it. See how I did here. There we go. Okay. We're just going to flip it around this way. Dry this a little more. You can see as this dries, I mean, the wrinkles are almost none because they dry out, the little bitty ones. I love the ticking stripe, too. I even like the red. But since this is fall, that's why I went with the gray. Um, just because of what I'm going to... I'm going to decoupage more paper on top of this, so I kind of wanted a more neutral base. But I love the ticking paper. It just reminds me of those old ticking mattresses and that. I don't know. I just think it's cool. So. This is the boring part, I know, guys. Sorry. But it is all part of the process, right? Okay. There we go. Okay, so now I have that edge all cleaned up. I left this white because I'm going to put a floor arrangement in here. Thank you, Jenny. Right. Not boring. Very necessary. So I don't care about that white edge around the top. If I have to paint it um, later, I will. But my hope is it's going to all be covered up and I won't have to worry about it. So, um, But we'll see. We will see when we get that far. I wanted this paper to pop, which is why I did end up painting the base um, white. So, because for you, for those of you that are new, if you want your paper to pop, paint your piece white before you decoupage. If you're going for a more dramatic look or whatever, you can paint it in color. And depending on the look you're going for, that looks really cool too. So, it's not that there's a right or wrong answer so there you go so here's this box that we are going 
to zhuzh up with some more paper. And so my thought was, on this side, what I want to do is, I love the heirloom pumpkins, and since I'm going to put a fall floral arrangement in here, we are going to decoupage these pumpkins, and I have two other ones, but I want my pumpkins to pop. I don't want the ticking paper to show through. I want my pumpkins to pop. So we're going to use that method of, let me get my, using this plastic wrap. I don't know if you can see it, see it, the plastic wrap. And so you lay that down. Let me get my white paint. I'm going to put some white paint in my little container here. And this is farmhouse paint. Doesn't matter which paint you use, though. You can use chalk paint. It doesn't matter. And then this medium that I was using, I'm going to mix a little of that. It's about a 50-50 mixture in with my white paint. And I'm just going to give it a stir. I have painted it without mixed, without doing the mixture, too. I have used it that way, too. Um, for some reason, I like to mix a little medium in there. I have found I like it better. Then this plastic that I laid here, guys, we're going to spritz it with our water again. I'm going to take my pumpkin and I'm going to lay it face down. And I want to make sure it is stuck to this plastic good. And I'm going to do this to the other pumpkins as well. Because I want to paint them all at the same time. So I've got other pieces of wrap here. A table's not big enough, you guys. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to spritz this paper. It's hard for me to see the plastic. And this is the other little pumpkin. But this pumpkin didn't have a stem. But this, these pumpkins, I should tell you, they're from Royce's Heirloom Pumpkin Fall Sheet that Lexi Grenger from Lexi Grenger Art Designed. And I love the Heirloom Pumpkins. So, um, and this sheet... Some of the pumpkins have, um, don't have stems, so you can stack them if you want, and some of them do. This one didn't have a stem in case you wanted to stack it, but I wanted to have a stem. So the cool thing is, is on that whole sheet of paper, there is extra stems that you can um, add to your paper or cut out and add it to your pumpkin. Does a paint mixed in affect the adhesion? No. Because I will end up decoupaging it on there anyway, Jenny. So this, the only thing that paint's going to do is make this pumpkin pop. Instead of seeing the ticking paper bleed through, you won't see the pick, ticking paper at all. Which is why I paint mine white before I, um, before I decoupage them on when I'm stacking papers. Sometimes I want the design to bleed through, and that's fine. This project, I don't. I just want it to. I want these pumpkins to be like standalone. So now I'm painting this this pumpkin here with my mixture of white paint and my decoupage medium. And Jenny, you can do this with your wise owl varnish too. If that's whatever clear coat you use for your decoupage medium, you can use. There's not a right or wrong way. I do not go all the way out to the edge. I leave just a little lip, as you can see. Maybe you can't. I will show you. See how I leave a little edge? And I do that because I don't want anything to ooze out when I stick it on my paper. <clears throat> now, if I was to seal this before I laid this down, I wouldn't have to worry about it. If it oozed out, I could wipe it off. But I'm not sealing it because I want to add something else to it. And if I seal it, the sealer will affect it. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And after being sick for about, I don't know, three or four days, I felt. And really the only symptom I had was like, 
a really super, super, super bad headache. Where the light and everything bothered me. I'm assuming it's probably like a migraine, a migraine, but I've never had a migraine. So I'll be just be guessing. Um, my brain just feels like it's really taxed. I feel like I'm behind. <laughs> well, hey, Melanie, how are you? I'm zhuzhing up a box, dear. I didn't even see you pop on. Well, hey, Royce. I wasn't as sick as some of you, Royce, so I'm not complaining. I ended up with a super bad headache. That was it. And then I had one day that I felt really, really bad, but it only lasted a day. So I am not complaining at all, dear. I feel bad for you guys. They got it a lot worse than me. I still feel like I have something in my throat. I mean, like I said, I have a raspy voice anyway, but I feel extra raspy now. But hey, ladies, don't they say ladies with raspy voices are sexy? <laughs> oh, I hope you guys get my sense of humor. <laughs> you got to laugh about it when you're sick. Because nobody asked for it. We're all weathering it. And I have a feeling we're all going to be just fine. Yeah. But I feel really raspy. Ah, Jenny, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's funny because when my voice started to go and I'd be talking to my sisters and they'd say, well, you sound like you're sick. And I was like, no, I'm not sick. I just have a headache, but otherwise I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It just slowly crept up on me. But it's all good now. Hi, Angela. How are you? Oh, hey, Olivia. Thank you. Melanie. Yeah, I didn't have all that, Melanie. I just, like I said, I had it very, very mild. I'm good now. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm heading in the right direction. All is well with me, I promise. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. And now I'm going to take my decoupage medium. And we are going to take this paper. If you look, see the pumpkin is on that side. So I'm going to take this paper. And it's pretty dry. So I'm going to lay my decoupage medium down. And I don't have to be too particular. I usually, if I... If I put a top coat down, even if I'm just going to touch up one area, I do the whole thing because it just gives, makes the sheen stay more even. So we're just going to get a good layer down here and then I can put all three of my pumpkins on here, hopefully. And I like doing this plastic wrap and mix to this because see how I can hover this over my project? And, well, if I wouldn't have waited so long, I would have had it down, guys. But misting your paper keeps the, keeps your paper on there. If I wasn't yakking, it would have worked. And it's still going to work. I'm just going to place my pumpkin where I want it. And, yes, I'm going to have to take a little bit of the stem off, but I'm fine with that. And then you lift this up and voila. And see how you can't really see the ticking paper behind this. If I hadn't have painted it white, it would have been really noticeable, which is why I do it this way. And now we're going to do the white one. But I got to put down a little medium right here where it's going to overlap my pumpkin. We're going to put, kind of put it at an angle, I think. Rub that a little bit and lift up. Well, I hope you're feeling better, Melanie. There's some bugs going around. It's not all COVID. There's just bugs in general. 
I know, Angela, but I love pumpkins. I do. So this is the last little pumpkin here that I'm going to add on here. And I also want it at an angle. And again, these are the heirloom pumpkin paper. This is a neutral ticking. The gray stripes are neutral ticking. The pumpkins are for the heirloom pa um, paper. If you guys don't have that paper, you really got to get it from your local stockist or um, whoever you order it from. I still have some in stock, but check with your local stockist first because this paper is just so, it really is so versatile. And see, I made a little stem because this pumpkin didn't have a stem. And I can pop it in there right there. Isn't that cute? Look at that. It's adorable. And I'm hoping I didn't screw anything up by putting this on there because I wasn't going to seal them yet. Let's, let's not go any further. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks, Jess. Yes, Verla, the paper is really cool. But you see how by painting them white, guys, it made those pumpkins pop versus if I would have just laid those pumpkins on there, you would have been able to see that ticking the stripes through there. And not that that's a bad look. It just wasn't the look I was going for now. I just want to get this medium dried a little bit. Because I am going to take my walnut crystals. And I got them in a little spray bottle. And I'm hoping my spray bottle is not clogged. When you mix them in these spray bottles, these fine mist sprayers, sometimes they clog. They're really easy to unclog. You can just take it to the sink and clean them out. I just don't have a sink up here in my craft room. So. But I want to just spritz. Because I want them to look kind of grungy. Ha! Love it! Look at that. Can I pick Look at that. Oops, in camera. Thank you, Lauren. I think the pumpkins look super cute. So I'm going to try and dry, draw these, uh, dry these crystals real quick. And I'm probably not going to get them all dried. But I want to finish decoupaging the other sides of this. Because we're going to decoupage all four sides. Where am I at on time? Oh, maybe we won't. Maybe I'll just show you because I want to show you guys something else here. So there. I love how that grunge looks. So I will just show you this side. I have these other pumpkins here. I have a set of three that's going on the opposite long side. And then I took and I fussy cut all these pumpkins like this and I will paint them white. And just put them on the ends and grunge them up. Um, but I really want to get to what we're going to do inside the box. So we're going to leave. We're going to leave it like this. And clean off the, the stem a little bit. So if I. If you can see inside this box. There is. Um. A wooden block and all I did is I took to, just took a scrap piece of wood guys and drilled a hole because it's gonna hold my light because I want to raise my my light um up out of the box Verla in the spray bottle in the spray bottle here guys up oh, excuse me for a minute sorry about that my dogs are barking and um, in this spray bottle here, it's it's called Walnut Crystals, I, Walnut Ice Crystals. I got them from um, Lexi Grunger, and you just mix them with water, and you can spritz your paper then, and it gives it this really cool aged look. You can see where all those dots are. I mean, it's that simple. Now, keep in mind, because this is a fine mist sprayer, um, because I store it like this, of course, Sometimes your sprayer gets clogged, but all I do is I take it to my sink, run some hot water on there, 
and it cleans it right up so you don't have to worry about it i was trying to see if i had a jar of that walnut crystals i was going to show you here looks just like this and if you open it up that's what they look like and so you just mix um i don't even know how much i used on there there's probably directions on here somewhere you, you, one level teaspoon to half a cup of hot water yep it's called walnut walnut ink crystals that's what it's called and i went to lexi grenger arts website and i ordered them there so yes order that it's very and it was they weren't that expensive either and as you can see you get that jar and it goes a long way so it's it's pretty cool okay so now back to my box so i just took a scrap piece of wood and i drilled a hole in it in this wood because it's going to help hold my light and as i told you earlier in the down here i drilled a hole because i'm going to feed my wire through it but i i gotta work this way so it doesn't matter but so i have these little lamp kits like this now i've had these for a long time so i don't know where i got them i got them wholesale somewhere because i used to make lamps all the time and i buy them in bulk um, but i'm sure you can get them somewhere and then i took here's my cord so we're actually going to wire this light inside this box and that's why i drilled that hole so we have these two ends we're going to stick them through this hole here and i just pull it through And this cord on this lamp, I buy the long cords. It's about seven or eight foot long. I buy the long ones because um, I want to make sure that I have enough cord to plug it in if I set this like on a table or something. Now, I should say, if you like these lighted boxes when I get done, you don't have to, you wouldn't necessarily have to put a lamp in it. You could just do your arrangement string in those little fairy lights or those battery operated ones and you could hide it behind your box if it was sitting on a table um if you didn't want to have something that plugs in but so i take this little lamp thing and you can see there's two screws on each side the first thing you want to do is back those screws out as far as they will go and i'm just using a screwdriver to loosen them up and I'm going to back them all the way out. And these little light things, I don't know. I don't know if Hobby Lobby or Michaels, I was going to look it up for you guys and I didn't. I don't know if they sell them or not, but I'm sure you can get them somewhere. And then you take, so you have these two wires like this. It doesn't matter which one goes where. And I feed it through the bottom. Hello, Sarah. I feed them through the bottom so one comes out one side and one comes out the other because you're going to attach these to those two screws. And so I just take my wire and you're just going to loop it around that screw. And sometimes you got to finagle the wire a little bit to get it to go around the screw the way you want but it's really not that hard i know i'm making it look hard but it's not i need a pair of needle nose pliers and i probably don't have any here do i oh, yes I do. here we go i like to use the needle nose pliers so i can pull this down and around and I give it a pinch with these pliers like that. See that? And then I'm going to tighten the screw down. And you want to tighten the screw down as tight as you can get it so that it fits the sleeve that we're going to put on here fits. So I do the same thing over here. And I just like to give it a pinch. I like to give that wire a pinch because then I know I have a good tight connection. And tighten that down just like that 
And now what I should do is I should screw a light bulb in there before I go any further and make sure my wiring job was correct because I have done it before and I, whatever reason, then you're like, well, crap, it didn't work. But let's see. Well, look at that. See, we're good. So it worked. And so then what I did is I took a, hey, Rita, I took a dowel because I want this light to be straight up and down. So I took a dowel that I'm going to feed in between these two wires. And that's going to be a pretty tight fit there because of the wires. So I'm good. And then I'm going to take my hot glue gun and in that hole on that scrap, scrap piece of wood, I'm going to put some glue. And I want to make sure I'm straight. Make sure my dowel's straight up and down. And we're just going to hold it there for a little bit. I got to take this light bulb off of there. Put my hot glue set up. Kind of pull my cord back out through this hole over here. Because I want my wire to come down like this. My cord, I should say, not my wire. And now that that's straight, I just want to I just want to dot a hot glue on there. I don't want a bunch because I don't want to melt my cord. But this will also help keep this on this dowel straight. Am I explaining this all right, guys? I hope hope I am. Watch the replay, Jill, and enjoy Arizona, sweetie. So there's that. And now, this is the decorative sleeve that goes over these light connections. Thank you, Royce. You're picking up what I'm putting down. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. So these sleeves, I painted this sleeve, guys, because if you can see on the inside of that, that was the color of it. It was ugly. It was like a ugly yellow. So I painted this because I didn't like the color. But now if I take, and this is why you want those screws tight. And this is going on fairly hard. So now when I put my flowers in here, my arrangement, it will look very decorative. And I only slide this sleeve down to... The top of that. Now I might put a little bigger uh, silicone bulb in here. This just happened what I had to have upstairs. So that's why I used it. And then to put my arrangement in here, I cut some floral foam. And this will also help uh, keep your... Um, well, thank you, Verla. I, I hope I am. This will help. This foam will also help keep your um, lamp straight, even though... It will be fine in that scrap piece of wood that I put in the bottom. So I cut two pieces and I had to do I had to do a little finagling. I won't lie. And these are the these are ends of uh, foam that I cut off of these to fit in the box. And I'm just going to slide them right down in there like that. And it's kind of like hugging this part too. So it's just another way, I think, to give you a little extra st stability. And this is as far as I got on my thinking, to be honest. Hey, Carmen, sweetie, I hope you're feeling better. 
Thank you so much for a wonderful weekend, hon. Hey, Lexi. Jenny, I am broadcasting here on Royce's page, my page, and my YouTube channel. Hey, Melissa. So now we have to put a floral arrangement in here, guys. And um, I haven't really decided what. I'm going to show you what I got. I might go ahead, since I have my paint net out, finish decoupaging um, this. But these are all my florals. That I, to do a floral arrangement, I have to really think about it. But I'll set this aside. I'll show you what I got. You can see my goodies if you want. Let me move this stuff out of the way because I will spill it. So I have some really cool fall florals. This can be used for either one, but I just love the way it looks. Um, but like I have, I have this and I really love this too. Look at, and these got little bitty pumpkins on there. Look at them little cute little pumpkins. Don't you think they'd be cute in here? <laughs> hey, Jenny. So I, I have them and I have just some fall berries. I usually tear leaves off. I usually don't use these leaves. They're not, I just don't like them. I only use them for fillers. But I have these uh, nice fall colored berries. I thought use some of them. I have these, which are a little bigger pumpkins. I think these are cute. Thrillers, fillers, fillers. Do you remember, don't you, Melissa? Good girl. <laughs> And then I have some of these, which I really like. Look at, they got acorns on them. Aren't they cute? So this is my dilemma. Some more. These, these are twiggies, and these you can bend, which I really like. I usually twist them like this. Love the twigs. And they also got little pumpkins on them. And then I have just some of these fall stuff like this. So... I really don't know how I'm going to do the arrangement, to be honest with you. Um, I will have to work on that. But right now, what I really want to do is I want to finish decoupage in this box so that I have that done and out of the way. While I have my paint and my medium out. So I think that is what I'm going to continue to work on now. I really wanted to show you guys how to wire those lamps. And like I said, not sure where you can get the kits. I'm sure they still sell them. Uh, if you really have trouble finding them, give me a holler. I will try and look back um, from one of my suppliers when I had my shop. Because I ordered them in bulk all the time. Do you remember too, Jenny? Cool. So let's, uh, let's see. That's one big side. Let's go ahead and do this side the same way I did the other one and I got all my my other pumpkins here so let's get everything spritzed I'll move them up in the camera And this little one I added the stem to also. And again, this is, this gray paper is the neutral ticking. The pumpkins are off of the heirloom pumpkin paper. It's one of my favorite papers by Lexi Grenger from Lexi Grenger Art. Um, if you don't have it, run get it because the pumpkins on there are so versatile this is probably like the second or third project i've come up with the paper using it in different ways so if you like if you like pumpkins go get this paper seriously you will not be disappointed so again i, I misted my plastic now i'm gonna paint it but the one thing you do want to make sure of is you don't have any wrinkles in your paper. You want your paper nice and flat when you do this technique. And 
And I want to mention, guys, if you are into decoupaging or just learning whatever your skill level is, um, Royce has a decoupage class, master class going on right now. If Royce, if you're still on there, can they still sign up for that? Because it really is a class that you, if you've ever taken a class from Royce, she over delivers. Um, so you could sign up. Um, I think I think you can still sign up if you. Uh, oh, hey Deborah, if you um, if you want, if Royce is on here, maybe she can tell me. The class is very informative, and she starts at the very beginning, so that's why I say it doesn't matter what your skill level is. Seriously. My little stem wants to move around because I got almost too much water on there. And we'll paint this one. Just like we did the others. Okay, let me grab a brush in my medium, and we will get these decoupaged on here, on this side. I'll try and slide it over a little. Okay, take the big pumpkin first, and this one's a white one. Okay, peel it up. There you go. And then I have a green one. Well, hey, Sherry Martin, how are you doing? Do you guys have a good... Weekend at your pumpkin thing. I was sending you good vibes, dear. And then we'll pull that up. And this one is a little bitty one, a smaller one. But he's so cute. Go like that. Put the stem on there like that. Voila. That is. Well, hey, Dorothy. Glad you're joining me. Colorado was great, Melanie. Being with all those creative people was exactly what I needed to, uh, to refuel myself. Absolutely loved it. give this a quick coat I really do love this technique you guys to make your paper pop for when you're layering paper I mean it's just so cool how just painting it white is all you gotta do Well, thank you, Rita. I'm just going to put some green pumpkins on the ends. I will probably add something else to it, too. I don't know what yet. But I'm screwing up my paper. I know that. There. Just a little bit more on these edges. Give me my medium. This is sealing it too. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Let me hover that where I want it. Right about there. Oh, sorry, Lexi. I thought I ordered them from you. Maybe you just gave me the link. Sorry, dear. Sorry I misled you, Jenny. <laughs> Lexi introduced me to them. I know that. I took a class from her, and that was one of the supplies. That's, pro that's where I fell in love with them at. So I am so sorry. I got to get this end dry, guys, so I can flip it over. Yes, Melanie, it's really good for you to be surrounded by a group. Thank you, Lauren. I wanted to show you guys. See where now those walnut ink crystals? I don't know if you can see it on camera. Can you see those age spots? I just, I love that effect. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, Sherry. This heat gun, it's absolutely wonderful. If anybody local to me needs one of these, I sell them. I carry Ranger in my store. Um, but this gun is fabulous. Rita, I'd never heard of the walnut ink crystals either until I took Lexi's class. That's when I first heard of it. And the effect that it uh, gave was um, my jam. Right up my alley. So. I thought I ordered them from her. But evidently I, she gave me. She told me where to get them. And I ordered them off of there. Because. But they go a long way. Yeah, Sherry, mine's a ranger too. I love it. They're great for lives because you can actually have a conversation while you're drying something. Because otherwise I had like a hair dryer. I had another craft tool too, but it was loud. It was very loud. Did a good job drying, but it was loud. So I understand completely what you're saying. Let's put this last pumpkin on here. And then I can show you the entire box because I'll end up spraying it with the walnut um, ink crystals. And yeah. And then I'll let it dry while I try and decide how I'm going to... Um, My, my arrangement, because I seriously don't know what I'm going to do yet. Okay, I have a cord here. I should have done this end at least before I put fed that cord in there, because then I could have poked a hole in the pumpkin. But we are going to make this work. I am going to... You can, Melanie. You can get them on Amazon. Yep. Yep. Evidently, that's where I got mine. I thought I ordered them from Lexi, but she doesn't carry them. So I got them on. I got mine on Amazon, too. Just didn't know it. Okay, so let's... Well, I kind of boogered up that pumpkin. 
But seeing that the cord's going to hang like that, you're not ever going to notice it. There. So let me get these sealed on there. Like that. So that's the first side. And so now I can see where here I didn't lay down enough medium. So I'm just going to go back and make sure I got all this stuff done, sealed, and we'll be good. But so this box is made anyway, guys, so you can display it either way. That's why I put my cord through the end because um, I sealed that side. Because that way you're not locked into how to uh, – um, yes, boogers are part of life, right? So – but by feeding it through this end here, you're not locked into, you know, having to display it one way or the other. So it's, uh, it's good. So I'm going to let this box dry and I will just show you, I'm going to put the ice crystals on there as soon as it's all, um, this side does not have ice crystals. I'm just going to show you the difference. This side does. Um, I think I love this side. So I'll end up spraying all of it with the ice crystals. You can see both ends. And I am going to put an arrangement in here. And as soon as I get the arrangement done, I will post a finished picture. I promise. Um, I just really got to think about. <clears throat> I got really got to think about my arrangement. I'm not um, professionally trained in doing a floral arrangement so i gotta really think about it um i can wing it though and usually get by i think i'll be fine but anyway thank you guys for joining me this is uh uh i promise i will post pictures when it's finished because i think it's going to be super super cute i ha i have another box like this that i am also going to thanks lauren do a christmas one i love doing these lighted lamps, I, I love, I love doing lamps like this. I've made them for years, and I, I really enjoy doing it. So, um, I will post it when I'm done. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, oh, thank you, Melissa, uh, for joining me. I seriously, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you guys taking your time out of your evening to spend it with me. It means, it means a lot. It means more to me than you know. Um, you guys all stay safe and healthy. Um, have a great night. Um, if I can help you guys out with anything, let, uh, let me know. I, if I need to find the link for you for the walnut crystals, if you need the paper, um, whatever, um, let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help. So I appreciate you all. Much love. Have a great night. Bye.